But veganism, it's growing. It's very popular at the moment, isn't it? I'm it sure is. there are other reasons apart from animal welfare that are on people's minds. Um, would you say it's a really good time or do you think we need to push it even more with supermarkets? And oh, I think we need to push it all the time as hard as we can. Um, <laughs> I didn't say that. Go hard. <laughs> yeah, go hard and go home, <laughs> vegans. <laughs> That's terrible. Okay, um... You know, it's like any social justice movement or any um, anything where you're trying to uh, redress an imbalance or um, division or subjugation of people or a group of animals. You always are fighting for it. Um, and victories are never handed to you on a platter. You, They're always hard won and you have to fight for them. And companies are only giving us more vegan products because of... Uh, decades of activists um, working, raising awareness and, you know, pushing hard and if we ever take the foot off the accelerator, they're going to stop um, looking out for the interests of animals so it's our responsibility not to just to be consumers and go and buy the latest vegan cheese when we can find it but to uh, work on all fronts uh, to to improve outcomes for animals And I guess even if it is a fad it, 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 it's not so so much a problem because people are still becoming aware of, of vegan food. Yeah, I'm not offended by like trendy vegans. I'm, I'm more offended when people do things like, you know, they're vegan but they're racist, or they're vegan and they're sexist, or they're a vegan and they're a fuckwit. If somebody comes to veganism for whatever reason, as long as they're a decent and kind and compassionate and progressive and inclusive person, I don't think it's a problem. Um, of course, there are a lot of people that use uh, body shaming agendas um, when trying to promote their blog or their vegan uh, you know YouTube channel and I'm I'm not really into that. Well, that's one of the reasons why I love what you do is because I mean the title alone I think it's fantastic because yeah. you're you're kind of throwing away all of that cliche crap about you've got to be a certain way or you yeah. you, you do look a certain way if you're a vegan it's like you're unhealthy. Well it's uh, you know I started my blog nearly six years ago now and when I started my blog and I needed to come up with a name for it and I said fat gay vegan I had so many people tell me don't do that uh, people will take it the wrong way you'll give vegans a bad name um, and I was like well a fuck you because yeah. I'll do what I want that's great though isn't it you're pushing the buttons <laughs> but you know it's a political statement I yeah. wanted to use words that had been used against me uh, in a negative way or to frame me as lesser than average or not the norm and to show people that I wasn't scared of those words and I was reappropriating them for my own use. Yeah, and you're so. totally owning it. Yes. Which is how it should be. Uh, celebrities, we mentioned about the fact that sometimes it's faddy, the veganism thing. Yeah. At the moment we've got a lot of celebrities. I'm not saying they're faddy, um, these particular celebrities, but we've got Ellen DeGeneres, we've got Beyonce, who are all vegans for whatever yeah. reason. That surely is a good thing as well, that it's becoming quite a high profile lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, I, I take it with a pinch of Himalayan pink salt because um, <laughs> you <My> know favorite. <laughs> yeah I love it um, because it can send mixed messages I mean if somebody says they're vegan and then the next week they're seen out in a, you know a fur coat uh, carrying a dozen free range eggs under their arm eating and, a rare steak yeah, yeah all at once yeah um, I think it waters down the message and the message is uh, it's for the animals and you do as much as you possibly can do to cut out animal consumption. Now, wearing a, a fur coat and eating eggs and eating steak every now and then is not doing the most you can do. It's actually probably doing close to nothing. So I think it can send mixed messages to the mainstream public. And I'm very cautious about holding up any celebrity as a vegan idol because of that very reason. I mean, even the most hardline vegan celebrities who have, you know, have sworn they'll never go back and have done anti-fur campaigns like Drew Barrymore or, um, well, I won't, I won't name them all, but... Um, oh, what a shame. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, or someone like Bill Clinton. And, I'm, you yeah. know, it's often not these uh, celebrities' fault. Uh, it's often the media that frame them. Or it's often vegan people like me or other activists who want to hold up a big name as an example to get attention. It's often our fault for idolizing or hero worshiping these people and putting them on a pedestal when in fact they've never publicly acknowledged that they're vegan so i think there is a danger because you know people change their mind they might be vegan this week and not vegan 
uh, the next week or next month or next year. So I think it's uh, it's a little dangerous to idolize those sorts of people. But it wasn't until I moved to the UK and I started to have internet access. Not that we didn't have it in Australia. I don't mean, I don't mean that at all. I don't know. I haven't been there in a while. They still might not have it. I'm, I'm not air sure. punching for the UK. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've you, got internet. You've got internet. 